I made a YouTube video a couple years ago called I Love Gun People. And it's, it's buried in there because I can't go viral if I had a cold. <laughs> but but the, the, the crux of it is I learned on the range what's right about America. And what I'm saying is a person that will give you a firearm is your brother. I learned that first in the Marine Corps. A person who will take it away from you is your enemy. That's as far as you have to get in philosophy. Doesn't matter what color you are, how tall you are, what your preference is it to whatever. If you were trusty with the firearm, that says a lot. Everybody can't say that. I got uncles there. Well, I can't give a gun to <laughs> there's, there's deacons in the church. Yeah, they're deacons now. They weren't deacons before. This gun issue is unique because it is American. Don't nobody fool you. A lot of countries have firearms. Nobody has a second amendment but us. Nobody guarantees that we have the right to keep and bear arms. Nobody says it's guaranteed for the rest of the Constitution. Nobody else puts that in there. How does a preacher get involved with the gun thing? Let's go back to a little kid. Anybody watch old kung fu movies? <laughs> Love them old kung fu movies. Where they're talking and come on. And talk and the voice come out later. Well, who was the baddest guy in the movie? Usually some old guy. Bent over, long white beard, master somebody. And nobody would mess with Master. They gave him all reverence. And Master was usually also a priest. So you have to have moral character to be entrusted with deadly arts like the martial arts. That old Asian culture of you don't entrust this knowledge of life and death with anybody. And you would, and the movies were made that way. So they always had this young kid who learned one move. You know how a white belt wants to fight everybody after they learn like two moves? <laughs> <laughs> they got one move. Down block. Hover block. And they want to fight the fifth damn black belt guy. But with the guy who is the master of the dojo never fights. That's us. We're the ones who have the knowledge of firearms. We know what a 308 is. We know what a AR-15 really is, what a military-style assault weapon is. We know what that is. And we're the nicest <coughs> folks you want to get to know. The bad part is, in this time, in this time of life, we're the bad guy now. We're the demons. That's where the preacher part comes in, too. So as the, the priest, the shepherd, I make sure that I bring up the characters of those people who I know are good people. I remind people that as a shepherd, our job is to protect. Before I was actually called into this one church that I'm in, my ministry, I was a biker evangelist. I was a I, I even preached at a range one. I would go outside. I'd love to have services at the beach. I'd rather be outside. I don't know about you guys, but I grew up on a farm. <clears throat> Between Maryland and a little place called the Blackwater Swamp Refuge at the bottom of Virginia in the corner next to North Carolina. My mother would send me out of D.C. every holiday to put me with my grandmother, who at the time... I didn't know she was poor. I didn't know how well off we were. <coughs> because we had love, we had family, we had, she had, we got the hen house, we got the ducks, we got the hog pen. I think she had a, a cow once, but he didn't make it. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> and I would keep going back and forth every year until I was 17. And then once I understood that the reason my mom was sending me away was to protect me, and I was learning all the same values from my grandparents, I joined the Marine Corps. I wanted to get out and show everybody that I was okay. 
loved the quiet kid. I was a kid that sucked at basketball, sucked at football, couldn't throw a baseball, but I could shoot. And I didn't know that was a big deal. I used to shoot dragonflies off the clothesline with a BB gun. <laughs> and I thought that was normal. Because they weren't going anywhere, they just sitting there. <laughs> and when I told that story, they went, you can't do that. I was like, they're just big bugs sitting on a wire. They're not going anywhere. Don't everybody shoot? <laughs> Didn't know that. Went to the military. Marines kind of like that kind of <laughs> So he's asking the question, but I'm reading everybody else because those are my audience. That's how you have to take the next time you stand before a camera, next time you stand before some crazy person who's got another agenda, they're not your enemy, really. They're just there. Sometimes you can say stuff, won't even, they won't even blink because they've been paid to do it. But it's the people in the back that don't know this is a game for some people. Passion. Let your passion come out. But be real about it. Say, you can say, I don't know. And here's some more good tips. If you get a radio person or a television person that sticks a camera in your face, you know how you can make them go away? Not say anything. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and say something really positive about the Second Amendment that they didn't even ask you. If they want to use your face, they got to use the quote. Mary and Barry. Mayor of Washington, D.C. Forever. Never just a councilman. I learned all my political stuff watching him on television. This dude smoked crack. Was arrested with a lady of ill repute. He done some stuff in the district. But when they put the camera in his face, he was like, man, what are you doing? He goes, I'm just trying to run this city. That's all you would get out of him. He'd be busted. But the sound like your kid is, I'm just trying to run this city. You're going to use it or nothing. So 20 years later, when they show back, this is Marion Barry, I'm just trying to run this. That's all you're going to get. That's how you beat the press. Don't let them catch you trying to figure out what Dr. John Lott, Lott said. There's a percentage on gunfacts.info. There's a whole bunch of stuff that people blaze over. Don't even, don't even fight. See what I'm actually doing, I'm telling you how to fight. I'm telling you how to fight. I'm telling you how to use your passion. I'm telling you how to survive. As we, as we stay together as a family, again, harmony, you got to sing the same song, we'll be on the same page, like a church. You got to evangelize the truth, but it's not always to the one person, it's to the many. 